What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Eat, Speak, Compete, the podcast where we talk about everything going on in the esports and gaming space every single week. My name is Yeso. As always, I'm your host, joined by my co-host, Luke Shimoni Hebrew, back for our second episode of 2022, but episode number 17 overall. Luke, welcome back. Good to see you again. Yeah, we're just cruising through January. I feel like everyone I talked to on this morning's calls or this week's calls was basically just like, it's week two? Mm-hmm. Like, damn, like first week just like got eaten up by everyone, you know, yeah. catching up and all that kind of stuff. So it's uh, another another week here. Um, I think think things are still a little slow on the esports side. Definitely. Um, but you know that's it's good because it's so crazy so often in the space that it's nice to have. I don't want to say downtime, but just like slower weeks where not everyone is like event to an 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 event. You know, so it feels like it's just the calm before the storm. Mm. Like we're starting to ramp up. I know. Pretty much all the league esports are starting, you know, starting or getting ready to kick off because I think LPL started last night and a bunch of other leagues getting ready to kick off this week. Obviously, Halo getting things going in 2022 as well over the last week. So it's coming. When does like LCS right? and stuff start up? This weekend. Okay. Cool. So uh, the 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 lock in tournament I think starts this weekend. And what's the what's the lock in tournament? Oh, so it's like something they so added like the to the format the season last season. They have a tournament prior to the spring split starting for like seeding or like just no just it's literally show, just, just big, like yeah it's just kind of cool. like yeah like let's have a fun it's the launch event, tournament yeah, yeah cool. to launch the season so. well i'm excited for that yeah it's uh that does bring me to my my bold prediction is it is league of legends base yes so last week at the end of the show i was like luke i need a bold prediction somebody didn't have one for me so he got to marinate for a week i came out saying i think phase clan will win a halo major this year that was mine what do you got luke so I was looking at just like the different esports and like which one I kind of wanted to focus on, and I feel mm-hmm. like through the show in general, League was kind of like the biggest game that we focused on this year because sure. uh, we like got so into like Worlds and the, and the pickums and that kind of stuff, and that was really fun for us. So I kind of want to make my prediction based on League again, and we can do the whole pickum situation. Maybe y'all at home can jump in with us this time. We can have a little grand prize, see who does the best. Like who knows okay. what we'll do, but definitely League of Legends in general is kind of where I wanted to put mine at. So I was looking into League of Legends and I was trying to think like what could I, like you know what team should I pick a roster or a specific player that's making their return whatever it is and I had a hard time picking just one. Okay. So I decided for my 2020 year gaming hot take mm-hmm. that I'm gonna take the Hopium at the beginning of the year. Oh my and god. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna say out loud. Oh my that, god. And, and look, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it a little ambiguous because okay, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that North America is gonna win world. Okay. Okay. okay because good. I feel like that's I not was fair. just gonna be like, oh my god. I, think, I feel like that's not fair. <laughs> However, I will say that I believe that this year that North America will have its most dominant performance at Worlds ever. I think that dominant is a strong word. Dominant is a strong word. So again, I'm you know it's like it's got to be it's got to be a hot take, sure. you know. So it can't be too easy, but also has to be possible. Mm-hmm. Well, let's be realistic here. <laughs> uh, so I was thinking like you know maybe maybe you know we get to maybe I say they they get to the the, the finals but they don't win it whatever it is. But okay. again, I just want to keep it. I want to ride the Hopium train and going into Worlds this year and with the Pickums like I, I didn't have the Hopium yet. I didn't gain the Hopium till like halfway through Worlds. But like I feel like. If I start with the Hopium at like a high and I just dive in and I just like really commit to North America this year, mm-hmm. we can do it. Shoot for the stars. Shoot for the stars. Land in the clouds. Right? Land in the semifinals. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know, hey, you look at the rosters. Obviously, we really liked 100 Thieves mm-hmm. uh, and their performance at Worlds. And I think there's a lot of things to build on. They're coming back with the same roster. You look at the Team Liquid roster, right? That's the spice. Boipos, That's Santorin. the spice. Not TSM, Bjergsen, Hansama, Core JJ. Like that's a disgusting roster. That if it meshes the way you would hope it would, has potential to oh. mix it up. Yes. Yeah. So you know, I I think that that is a hot take, but not as you would say an impossible or unreasonable uh, expectation. So we'll have to see. Maybe. I would love to see. It. Hey, Worlds is going to be in North America next fall. So. I'm all about it. Show up on your home turf. Give us something to be proud of. NA teams. There you go. Please. We're, we're we ready ask. for you. We we we're taking the hopium here at Eat, Speak, Compete. So yes. you, you know it. We're all about it. So let us know what your uh, hot takes, big expectations are for 2022. We would love uh, to hear from you all. But we could jump into things here. Uh, as Luke said, 
probably not going to be a super long episode this time around, but a few things we did want to touch on. Obviously, we're squeezing this in between, you know, Luke's already talking about he's had meetings and stuff. We're kind of slotting this in between a few meetings of our own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is our Luke Luke and I's opportunity to step away, (laughs) tell the rest of the office to f*** off. Oh, my God. Uh, We're going to come and talk and (laughs) hang out. No, I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Uh, But let's start at the top. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit of Twitch stuff. It's not something that we touch on super often, Mm. but... Uh, there's been a lot of controversy, a lot of conversation around Twitch recently because of the whole Twitch Reacts meta. Uh, obviously, tons of big streamers have been getting into reacting to some copyrighted content. Uh, one I've been watching a lot. I'm a big Hasanabi fan. He's been on the big MasterChef kick and watching MasterChef for weeks. I've really enjoyed that. Um, but it really kicked into high gear this last week when Pokimane got banned for 48 hours for watching Avatar The Last Airbender on stream. What are your kind of just initial thoughts on this whole thing going down on Twitch? I want to kind of dig into it. Um, I think it's a pretty like interesting overall scenario mm-hmm. where like there is no like successful side of the argument, I guess, right? Because sure. like, yeah, they're watching content that's owned by somebody else, but... That's, like, what the internet is. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to, like, live streaming, then, like, you can't legally live stream someone else's content like you would at, like, like, because technically Netflix is streaming, right? But then, like, so if if you talk about, like, verbiage and, like, lawyers, then it's, like, all of a sudden you're talking about two different things but the same thing, right? So, like, that's, I think, where a lot of, like, the the muddy stuff kind of gets in where it's, like, everyone's... That the different parties that are like conflicting or arguing different points because mm-hmm. like they're not even talking about the same thing right so i think that they're because but then where does it end like what if i was streaming that same content but i wasn't but pokemon's camera just like wasn't there and she wasn't talking and now i'm just streaming avatar mm-hmm. that would probably get a lot of viewers because people want to watch avatar for free sure right so i think you probably just do that on a billion other websites and youtube also you know yeah. so it's like where, where where's the actual line like where you know and then also just i mean i'm sure i'm assuming that the Twitch ban was automated. If I had to, if I had to guess, I don't know. If it I wasn't don't think auto- it was. if I wasn't automated, then like, can't you just tell her to stop and not ban her? Mm. You know, it's like I don't know. So it's it's, I just it's it kind of I'm kind of disinterested by the the whole the whole the whole conversation because I think the streamers should be able to watch stuff with their fans if they want to. It's like okay, you're telling me like I have to do this in my own private Discord then. Like the only, you know, it's, I don't know. It just, it seems like there's no way to stop people from doing it. So like, why not just implement rules that allow people to do it? You know, cause I bet Pokemon would pay to do it. Yeah. I think that first of all, I think to a certain extent we're due to how big this has gotten and especially all the big names that are duping it. I think Twitch is quickly approaching a situation similar to uh, what we saw with the entire uh, music DMCA Thing that we had uh, over the last couple of years, and there was that one was very specifically controversial. I remember one specific story sticking out to me. I think it was a, uh, I think it was a, a Smash TO channel. They ran like a lot of tournaments or, what, or whatever, and because a lot of their old vods had music in them that Twitch decided were DMCA a bull, their whole vod library got bodied, and they lost it all. Because I guess they didn't have backups of these kinds of things. And so uh, when I look at this kind of situation, not that I'm necessarily worried about the whole the VOD, the VOD thing, but I know that these kinds of strikes can have very large effects on channels. And it seems like Twitch is very quickly approaching a similar situation where people are just going to start getting banned left and right. Um, I know there were a lot of smaller content creators that weren't happy with the situation because they feel like these big content creators that have contracts with Twitch and can kind of get away with these things to an extent because of the sway that they pull with the company because of the kind of viewership they bring in they do it and they can get away with it but the smaller streamers now get punished by the kind of crackdowns that you see uh because twitch wants to avoid these kinds of lawsuits and i thought that was an interesting discussion i would say in the end i agree with you and it was a point that pokemon expressed that she would like to see people able to do these kinds of things because it would seem that while the video game industry, for the most part, has recognized the benefit of having streamers play their games on stream or being able to react to their content and, and, and expose their audiences to it, it's marketing. 
and I would imagine that hopefully TV shows and these kinds of networks come to these same realizations. But at the same time, the anger I would argue right now is when you talk about it's the money, right? They aren't getting a piece of that pie, right? Fox or whoever isn't making money necessarily, uh, or at least the way that they want to off of Hassan watching MasterChef for mm -hmm. the last month. They want a cut. They want a piece of the pie if their stuff's going to be on there. And it just feels like we are very rapidly approaching due to just how big this has blown up over the last couple of months to something happening and some big systemic changes in Twitch to try and incorporate all of this into what they already do. Yeah, it's it's such a fundamental, like we'll take the music scenario for instance, and it's such sure. a fundamental industry specific issue yes. that's dates further than esports and gaming and the internet can even get there. You Certainly. know what I mean? Like the We're going back to Napster days. Right. Here. So it's like it's, it's a hard conversation to have because the roots of the issue are so integrated into the music industry that mm -hmm. it's almost arguably unfixable. Like you legitimately cannot fix the problems that we're having in today's age yep. because the rule book was written in the, the 1970s. Yeah. Where they didn't even know what was going on, right? So it's it's one of the situations where in order to make sy systemic change in the music industry Good luck. Yeah, good luck. You know what I mean? <laughs> Literally, it's like, oh, okay, no. Like, just quick heads up. You, like, Twitch can't just make a big music deal and pay for the rights for everyone who streams on Twitch to be able to, like, stream X amount of music or X branded music because there's too many hoops that they have to jump through. It's not like, oh, hey, Mr. Post Malone. Like, let's make a deal with Post Malone and now people, anyone on Twitch can stream Post Malone music. It's like, mm -hmm. that is such a complicated conversation to have if you're talking about the music industry because of how many hands and have, are in that same cookie jar. There's too many people. Mm -hmm. And also that's only one artist there, right? Is like, is that, do that a million times? We're doing just because you only have now just secured just Post Malone's library. So then library it's like, okay, music, do, right? we, do we do like a third party, um, a third party like a nonprofit organization that represents all artists and artists in general? And we try to, and we try to- Are you going to like a record label and as now a whole Twitch, now? And now Twitch, even, even bigger than a record label. I'm talking sure. full nonprofit, like not associated with a specific artist, but mm -hmm. the music industry in general. And Twitch pays this third party agency and that third party agency then based on what everybody, what music everyone on Twitch streams, mm -hmm. then they calculate how much money each of those individual artists would need to make. And they, they individually would then build Twitch, take Twitch's money and then distribute that money to associated marketing. Like, I'm being serious. No. Oh, and is, I hear you, and, and I'm just like and that, trying to process the, and that the, kind of stuff the size does exist, of what you're talking And that kind about. of stuff does exist mm -hmm. in like you know physical venue type scenarios, right? Like sure. if I'm hit, I'm, if I'm sitting there at an esports arena playing Rihanna music, just like no rules, nothing. I'm just blasting Rihanna music inside my, or even a localized bar, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, there will be a third party nonprofit organization on my front door within the next week or two telling me that I owe Rihanna money because mm -hmm. I'm playing Rihanna's music in my owned property, mm -hmm. right? that people are coming into, right? So yep. it's like Rihanna's entertainment, you know, whatever, right? But mm -hmm. that kind of stuff happens, yeah. right? So it's like Buffalo Wild Wings and all these guys, like that's why like when you go to Starbucks, they're playing the same exact CD soundtrack on loop because mm -hmm. they have to. Yep. It's the only way that they can. So it's, I'm using this just as an example across the board because it's the same way with the, the, the live streaming shows and that there's just, you know, you saw all the Scarlett Johansson, Disney Plus stuff, like, oh, we were streaming it on this, that. Yeah. It's like, it will, they're, they're, the solutions are way bigger than our industry unfortunately and because of that like the solution has to also come from almost outside of the industry like yeah. i listened to uh, clinton sparks is a extremely talented and knowledgeable person in the gaming space also the ceo and founder of xset um mm, okay. he uh, comes from the, the music space and i listened to a, a podcast with him on it where he really like broke the, down a lot of these different components of the music side of things because a lot of the questions being pointed at him was like oh like you know the dmca stuff right and, like how do we get out of that can we do this and that and he was like no you know, yeah. it, it could be a stigma. <laughs> the short because, and long answer is no. <laughs> it could be a stigma because, like, oh, he's you know from he's from that time period, so it makes sense that he doesn't think it can change. So it's like okay, sure. but then when you really look into it and you listen to everything he says and like you look at all of the like I mentioned like the roadblocks, it's like mm -hmm. oh, okay, so in order to do this, we need to do this first, but we need to get to them, and then like now we're essentially like literally restructuring not a industry but the entertainment industry in general. Yeah. Which I'm not saying it doesn't it won't happen, but. I just really want to put into perspective that I personally feel like it is a much larger conversation than Twitch. And because, yes. I mean, because of that, it's just unfortunate because I don't see a solution in the short term yeah. at all. Other than 
you know, have Pokemon should do private viewings in her own Discord and just do her own thing because. Yeah. But then she's not. She doesn't accept donations anyway. <laughs> so, but I don't know. And and I mean, I think you're completely right because you want to talk about it being bigger than Twitch. It's a battle that YouTube has been fighting for years, and DMCA is a big problem over there and talking about transformative content. And I think uh, largely the battle fought over on YouTube has been uh, a good one and should favor the creators because there's a lot of creators who are creating transformative content and in and, and doing something with these things and, and being additive to the medium and still getting claimed and it's obviously a big issue and then you have to look at the you know do these corporations a twitch a youtube have any real interest in fighting back and protecting the creators because it's like is it more beneficial for them to be on the side of the creators or on the side of the corporations that they get tons of marketing dollars from and all these other things. So it's, you tell me Amazon's trying to make money? Yeah. Oh, what? No <laughs> way. You shut your mouth, <laughs> JC. <laughs> so I, it is a very complicated question. Um, there is no simple answer. And yeah, I think the, the point you make where there's just, there's so many different hands, companies involved, so many different interests that you have to deal with that it is an incredibly complex and large and difficult problem to deal with. And it's not, uh, you know, when I say we're quickly approaching something, we're definitely not quickly a approaching a solution. Yeah. That's for sure. Just a million more questions about how this is going to go down. Yeah, stuff I see Twitch doing, right? Like, um, you know, like launching, like, their, their music division, shout out to mm -hmm. William Morris, um, and all that kind of stuff <laughs> that they're, do I'm a, like, I can only assume sure. that, like, their high-level executive type structure and planning is that they're, they're building out you know, if we build our own record label, we like sign our own artists, those artists make their music, we own their music, then anyone on our platform can then utilize that music, like building a library of music like that and yep. bringing in larger artists like, you know, let's say like a Steve Aoki, who's also very integrated into the space, mm -hmm into that record label, which is probably impossible because he owns his own record label, or Dead Mouse, right? But maybe there's a cross, you know? It's like something in there, like maybe there's potential, but again, mm. it's like I think that they're really just laying a brick at a time trying to build Tower of, you know, Babel or whatever. That's a bad reference. Go ahead. <laughs> Definitely uh, just, again, something to, to keep an eye on, and I'm curious to see how it continues to develop. So uh, I'm very interested to see where things go there. Let's uh, pivot now to some Apex talk. Uh, the ALGS Pro League qualifiers happened over the weekend and they finished up. Uh, and there are some teams moving up into the ALGS for split two. Uh, we can talk about a few of them. CLG will hold on to their spot. Uh, they make it back into the Pro League after a very rough uh, first split. Uh, a couple of other teams that you may recognize start a fight uh, made up of Crummy, Aves, and Matt Pickett. Some OGs Woo! from Series E. Uh, they made it into uh, the Pro League, which is awesome. Congratulations to them. RCO Esports is a squad that nice. regularly competes in open nights, has been for the past two seasons. Grinders. They made it in. Uh, and then Dab, the hey. splash roster, which is Blight, Phoenix, and Dracos, oh. they made it in as well. So some big Series E representation, especially when you consider the fact that CLG made it in with, uh, you know, a new member, a new third on that team. You may recognize him. Mamba. I don't know. He's played a little bit of Series E here and there. One, one, one uh, or two twice. Currently yeah, you signed know, to Team Razor. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So, uh, some big names. Uh, obviously, some big Series E pride jumping into the ALGS Pro League qualifiers uh, and making it into Split 2. Uh, anything jump out to you on that front this weekend? Um, it's always cool, you know, seeing uh, the ecosystem in general, I guess, continue to, to function, people being able to rotate in and out, people yep. losing their slots, refighting for them. You know, it's like, okay, we lost our slot like CLG, or we lost our slot, reform the roster, whatever it is, let's try out some new players, boom, got back in, right, or kept that slot. That's really cool to see um, just the overall flow. Obviously, we run a very similar type of league, and on our end with Series E, um, I think it works really well for it. So it's, it, that's always good. To congratulations to all the boys, Blight and all y'all who, yes. you know, Crummy, Aves, and, and Pickett. Those those guys are, are, like you said, OGs of Series E. Big fans of us here. Mm -hmm. um, so shout out to all those guys. Great job. I'm excited to see them all get absolutely thrashed by <laughs> Team Esports Arena. Yes. Uh, it's a good try, guys. Uh, congratulations <laughs> on making it. Uh, I hope you guys make it again next season because we're gonna push you back down. Um, but outside of that, no, it's uh, it was cool to it was cool to see. Um, I guess there's a double-edged sword here. It was cool to see everyone getting so excited about making it into the pro league because mm -hmm. it's like, I made it, mom. You know, like that vibe. Was, <laughs> it was all over Twitter yesterday, and I was, like, really enjoying that. Mm -hmm. um, but also, obviously, as a caveat to that, because of the fact that now you can't get back into the pro league because the qualifiers or whatever, like, just ended mm -hmm. for a while at least. Now everyone's 
who didn't make it in is reforming their teams. Everyone is, you know, uh, uh, kicking off a, a final third. You know what I mean? It's like it's just like so much movement going on. So uh, for you guys who don't know about Series E, we do have something that's called Roster Mania that comes up uh, every couple of months or so, where essentially we have like a, a big team mix around where players will go to different teams or get dropped, new players get picked up whatever it might be. Uh, and that's coming sooner rather than later, let me tell you that, because there are some mix-ups. I was talking to Shane, our player manager, earlier today, and the mix-ups are crazy right now. Yeah. This player's going here, this player's going there, this player wants to try out this player, these guys are gonna be trying out these guys this week, and we'll see how that goes for next week. This guy dropped, this guy quit competitive completely because he didn't make the pro league. Like, it is absolutely bonkers right now. So for everyone in the Apex space, if you guys are interested in getting into competitive Apex, now's a great time. They're looking for some jobs <laughs> now. The best teams are looking for those players. So grind that leaderboard, um, play a little Series E, you know what I'm saying? Get yourself yeah. noticed and uh, keep the ball rolling. Never a better time to be an Apex pro than now. So It definitely is. It really feels like just the Apex competitive scene as a whole is on just a recurring 60-day timer. <laughs> Every two months, 60 to 65 percent of the rosters just get lit on fire <laughs> you know it's like you know top 10 in algs really good performers or whatever people that are coming up uh you know and have really good momentum towards the top they're all fine but it's just like you get so many teams that are like all right we had a bl bad split blow it up you know and, and a, the crazy thing too is that it feels like a lot of the time it's not a hey, we think that, you know, maybe this one guy didn't quite work out. We feel like if we make this one swap here, we we have a good core here. We can build on it with a new third. It feels like a, a not insignificant portion of it is just blow the whole roster up. All three of us are splitting up. We're going to go form three brand new competitive rosters. And it, it, what it creates, and, it, and it's really funny to watch, is so many players that have all these different relationships you always get to see it on twitter just regularly but it really shows here because you it feels like one player will play with five different rosters in just a single year it's you get to know so many different players and i would hope coming out of that you would maybe could you know have a better understanding of what kind of players you want to pair up with to succeed but it would seem that again with this recurring 60-day timer of just blowing up all the rosters that I feel like nobody's learning anything. <laughs> like, figure it out, guys. Like, I keep seeing a lot of the same names in these roster shakeups every two months. Feel, what the hell is going on? I feel on? like, too, a part of it is, like, because of how fast the Battle Royale meta shifts, mm -hmm. too, that, like, a lot of the times, like, you know, where your Caustic player, yep. you know, might be your carry... <laughs> might then turn into if he's a caustic one trick you know what i mean like so it's all about just like finding that i don't know it's it's it is about oh but also the you got to try out for a while and then it's like you know we're not meshing you know we don't have like the in-game synergy that we need right because again like when you're when you're dealing with this caliber of gamers Ooh. they're all insane yeah you know what i mean they can all 1v3 yeah you know what i mean like if you talk to any pro that competes at that level they're confident they can 1v3 you sure all of them and if that's the case and everyone can 1v3 me, may I add. Everybody thinks they can. And if that's the case, then it's like, okay, now it's really about just finding, like, what's that perfect, you know, what gives us that What gives us that 0.01% advantage on the next roster that makes sure. it so we can be the next, the TSM at the top of the leaderboard, the next Complexity at the top of the leaderboard, the next Team Liquid at the top of the leaderboard, the next eSports Arena at the top of the leaderboard. Yes. Now. A lot of things for these <laughs> rosters to figure out. But at the very least, there's going to be a good infusion of fresh blood. Mm. For the ALGS uh, Pro League second split, I'm looking forward to it, uh, and obviously then the lead up to playoffs and all those kind of things. Hopefully getting a LAN, hopefully getting international play. We'll have to see, but of course we are going to get um, the North American only playoffs coming at the end of the month, and I'm definitely looking forward to that. You want to talk about Team Esports Arena? We'll definitely be talking about them more as we approach February. Definitely looking forward to that, but. We'll close the Apex talk there. We'll obviously hit on that more in the future. Uh, but let's wrap with some HCS talk. Uh, I, this, I, I find this to be a very interesting conversation because going into Raleigh, it felt like the entire conversation was Sentinels or Optic. And of course, uh, with the you know temporary suspension that Sentinels had to deal with and all that kind of stuff, I think framed it even further around that roster and Optic. And then both of those rosters, you know, neither of those rosters even made grand finals at Raleigh. 
it ended up being Cloud9, which is, credit to them, a very, very good roster, and I think uh, one that a lot of people should have their eyes on. And then in the United roster that I would say not a lot of people were putting, you know, would have been putting money on to be finishing top two at that tournament with the kind of talent that was there. And now not only have uh, did Optic and Sentinels not end up top two at Raleigh, but now they aren't doing it here to kick off uh, the HCS Pro Series as we see Cloud9 continuing their momentum from Raleigh. They take uh, 3-0 wins against FaZe in both Winners Finals and Grands, uh, and they keep it rolling. And it seems like as we were getting ready to kick off Halo Infinite Competitive, nobody could stop talking about Optic and Sentinels, and now they seem to be very much outside of the conversation at the top for the moment. Yeah, you know, it's the the game is still pretty new, sure. you know, but I, I don't want to discount the dominance that Cloud9 is showing in, yes. the, in this early meta, you know, yes. and I think that, you know, you can contribute a lot of that to the fact that they're the Halo 5 champs, the fact that, um, it's like, oh, not, not a lot of people are playing as much Halo 5 than these guys were, mm -hmm. uh, so, like, you know, when it comes to just kind of one-to-one, they, they were, like, really setting themselves up for this, right? Renegade was probably ended Halo 5 as the best Halo 5 player of all time. I don't, I don't know if there's any arguments on that end. It's, Frosty. Um, it's true. That's pretty fair. Yeah. Um, I don't know who actually won more two World Championships. In the Halo 5? Yeah. I think it was Sentinels. I honestly don't know the answer to that. Because I know they both won. Sentinels won the most recent one, so mm -hmm. I guess there's that. But regardless, um, you know, and it's, it's one of those things where obviously the meta will keep keep evolving, but we're going to see the same talent up there, right? You can see the overall, like, I mean, even E United, right? Like, they're just, I think they're just a sleeper team because they don't have, you know, Spartan is, like, their, um, I guess, poster boy, if yes. you will, and he just happens to be less popular on the internet than Fair. Frosty and Renegade sure, are, right? Sure, so sure. I feel like that's why they're a sleeper team. Um, but he's kind of a cool character as well. He's kind of an OG villain um, from back in the day. And yeah, I mean, I loved his pop-off against oh, Baze. Yeah, that I, was I so sick. He apologized a lot for that one on <laughs> the internet, did, let me but... tell you that. But uh, he's, a, he's kind of an OG villain. He's kind of a cool guy sure. overall. He's, they've got a really, really powerful team. So um, I think they're a total sleeper team. I think they're easy top three in the conversation as far as okay. um, gameplay goes. Like, just like watching them play, like they're an absolute unit. Um, FaZe Clan, uh, I love your obviously hot take of the, of the year because FaZe Clan has nowhere to go but up. They have literally their, their legacy anchor yep. combined with a bunch of fresh blood that proved themselves in H5 and has, you know, still has their literal peak to hit in, yeah. in Infinite, which is awesome. Um, and you, we've already seen them get, since even just between Raleigh and Week 1 in the Pro League, it was like, damn, like they're way better already. Like, yeah. So, of course, everybody kind of showed that a little bit, but... Um, but overall, honestly, it was it was such a, it's it's gonna be so fun watching these teams compete so regularly, um, and I don't think we'll see any type of roster situation that we do in like Apex, right? Like sure. you saw what happened when we moved one, like when Royal didn't get, couldn't play, like you saw what happened to the community on that end. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I think that the the rosters will be more uh, stagnant in that top section of gameplay, and that will cause for some pretty cool week to week meta um, growth, if you will, right? Because you know, the, the the different jumps that I'm still learning every day are blowing my mind with the different maps and, like, the movement. That, seeing <laughs> these guys, follow Shyway. Seeing these Twitter. guys jump slide, like, fly yeah. across the whole map and grapple and chuck them. So literally, like, I'm on A, I'm on C, I'm on B, like, all, all like, within 10 seconds. Like, I don't know. It's It's been super fun. I'm having a blast watching Halo 5. Cloud9, I think, is, is still light years ahead. Like, I think that people, like, are really going to have to try to catch up. So, so. Do, do you feel like because... Again, I think the conversation was so heavily, even with the issues that Sentinels had to deal with going into Raleigh, the, comp co the conversation seemed to be so heavily framed around, are Sentinels or Optic yeah. going to win Raleigh? And then that wasn't, you know, I don't know that I would say it wasn't even close to the result because they did get, uh, I think they both finished top, top six. six. But neither made it into Grand Finals. Was, do you feel like it was too much of recency bias because of, like, obviously, our 25K led into, uh, you know, Raleigh the next weekend. And both of those teams were in grand finals there. Uh, and they had been, uh, obviously, kind of going back and forth over the couple weeks prior to the event. Did you feel like it was just 
a little too much recency bias and people had just forgot about the kind of talent that were on Cloud9 in the United? No, I don't want to say that they, they forgot. I just, I don't think that you can put anything into perspective as much as you can put a LAN into perspective. Sure. And I think that uh, a lot of, you know, it's the first Halo Infinite LAN. For a lot of Halo fans, it was their first LAN they've ever seen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's pretty easy to have bias in that sense because, you know, if you're only watching online tournaments or you're only watching the two or three big streamers and, you know, half of them are Sentinels. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's, Fair. I think that is a pretty easy scenario. I mean, you see that all the time in esports. Like, whoever the biggest streamer is, that's the most popular team. Look yeah. at TSM. Yeah. TSM's the most popular team across all the boards, but they're not the best team in almost anything. Like, literally. They don't... Other than Apex. Other, I mean... And even then, even then they haven't worked for a long time. Like sure, it's sure, sure. you know, it's been it's been a hot minute. Like I'm not saying they never win anything ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm just saying like as an org, it's like they're not like the winning org. Mm -hmm. They're they're the popular org. Like they're always in the top maybe three, four of the of that pers per, uh, perspective game at the time. But usually it's like you know who knows who could win this season. Mm -hmm. But um, so in that sense specifically, I wouldn't I wouldn't put too much bias on it because that's pretty much what you always expect. But when it comes to lands, can't argue with results. That is facts. I'm not, it doesn't happen For every sure. week. Just like online tournaments happen all the time, right? Like latency lag, different computers, different. everyone's playing on different inputs. There's so many factors that go into it. So you don't want to discount it, obviously, but land is land. And I think we proved that. So yeah. And I mean, at Cloud9 have very firmly established themselves as the team to beat right now. Uh, so we'll have you to know. see what the full Sentinels roster can do, though. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting. I think... Uh, Getting ready for Anaheim. Obviously, sadly, Anaheim, no spectators. They've mm. obviously made adjustments there and announcements there. If you guys have not uh, seen those, check out the HCS Twitter feed. They have more details over there. Um, I'm just going to get a behind the stage pass and like scream for the, enough for the whole crowd. So that way you guys will still feel like there is a crowd because it'll be me. Luke and I will go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be out there. We'll yell for everybody. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm looking forward to it. it it's going to be exciting. And I think uh, at the very least, you know, I, I think it's great that neither Optic nor Sentinels have won an event yet since the launch with with Raleigh Spicy. because I think it just it continues to build those storylines and now so it's many just good like, rosters right, though what's coming next oh I I agree it's like damn like anybody could win yeah to be honest like I know Cloud Nine is like you know making a run for it and Phase Clan's been showing up too but like I'd say probably like the top five or six teams are like pretty close to each other mm -hmm. like just hard with EU too though because like I don't know I didn't, don't even know like where to place EU because I feel like sometimes when I watch EU I'm like damn EU's cracked but then other times I'm like. Did everyone just off of my did, screen? Yeah, literally, what, what, am I, what am I looking at, bro? Like, so it's just hard with the servers and stuff. But um, definitely excited for another LAN. And I, I hope that um, the viewership, the, the excitement, all that kind of stuff. Like, I, I see no reason for it not to just keep going. Yeah. So, um, Halo's in a good spot. Infinite. They're, they're, they're Infinite on the right spot. trajectory. I'm playing a lot, too. For sure. What else? Yeah, you've been playing Halo. What else have you been playing? I mean, I'm playing, I've been playing, honestly, a lot of Halo, pretty much any time all the boys are on. It's just like, mm -hmm. we're playing Halo. It's like the shooter of choice, for sure. We've been, we did some 4v4 customs last week. Oh, yeah, we did get some time. 4v4 customs in uh, with the, some of the HQ staff here. But we, uh, we've we been talking about trying to get back into Valorant a little bit. But, like, we just every time we do, we're just like, let's just play Halo. <laughs> <laughs> so we've mostly just been, been playing Halo because it's, it's honestly just, like, so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, but so definitely, definitely a lot of Infinite. Um, still playing some TFT. Still playing some TFT. I'm, I'm currently... I'm just hanging out in Diamond. It's just like, every time I feel like I figure out the meta, they just release a damn patch. And I'm just like third, fourth, third, fourth, slowly climbing, and then I'll get like one sixth, and I'll lose all my my whole my whole day's worth of climb. And I'm just like, <laughs> uh, but then I'll win like one game, and I'll get like, ha like so much. And I'll just be like, just win the game. Stop getting <laughs> third, bro, please. Cause like, it's crazy. But um, TFT has been a lot of fun still. Like I think it's probably the best set since one. Okay. Um, which is which is pretty nice. Uh, I've been really enjoying some of, like the streamers and stuff too. So it's been it's been a really good uh, it's a good time to be a TFT fan, which is nice. Cool. Um, other than that, uh, I'm still playing Axie Infinity a little bit. I yeah. My little NFT games and stuff like that. So if you guys are kind of into that, hit me up on on Twitter. I've been having a lot of fun kind of talking about that game and trying to push myself into the the meta of that and see if I can uh, show myself up on the leaderboard, troll some kids. Okay. Um, have I played anything else? No. Oh, I'm playing. Uh, I played uh, Watch Real Sports on Sunday <laughs> uh, because the Raider game. If you guys are football fans, this is now a football podcast. If you guys are football fans, you guys know that the Raider Charger game happened yesterday and we were tied. And the winner got into the playoffs. However, if we tied, 
We both got into the playoffs. Yep. But if one of us won, then one of us got into the playoffs and the Steelers got in also. So, with that being said, the Chargers, literally last second touchdown to tie the game, going to overtime, we kick a field goal, they kick a field goal, game's tied up. We could have just taken the kneel, game would have ended. We didn't. We went for it. We Ian. scored. Let's Steelers be clear. Raiders, baby. Let's, Let's go! go! Raider Nation! Let's be clear. The, char- <laughs> the Chargers wouldn't have kneeled it out either. Like in the same Absolutely situation. Absolutely not. That's what I think is funny. Is like if there are any Chargers fans mad about it or whatever, it's just like, bro, if you guys were in the same situation, but think, yeah, you would have gone for it. You would have kicked. It's not even that, for bro. The win. It's it's a simple it's a simple KO, bro. It's competitive integrity. Sure. Think about the spread, bro. Think about the spread. You can't also, just the you Chargers can't just and the Raiders the game. The Chargers and Raiders don't like each other, so why yeah. so why would either of them do a favor for the other? Take them down and stab the Steelers in the back? No, you got to you got to play for the win. Yeah. You guys are competitive football players, play to win. Yeah. That's what we did and we won. You'll see us in the playoffs. Yeah. So there's your uh one, you know, traditional sports drop every 10 to 15 episodes there. From Luke. So I'll give you I'll Raiders. give you a weekly playoff update now, boys, because the Raiders are in the playoffs. So expect to see a lot of this, okay? Luke's all about it. Um, myself, new yeah, race season playing. started uh, for league hmm. on Friday. So, so you give up pretty fast, jump over to Valorant. Uh, no, I played like. Th- three games last night and then played to Valorant. That is giving up way too fast, JC. Okay, oh, we need, I need you no. grinding. Okay? So here's the thing. That's long for me. <laughs> for me, right? These days, you know, I used to, first few years I played League, I could sit and grind for six, eight hours and just go. Just play game after game after game after game. These days, my tolerance is so much lower for League um, it's definitely more at the start of the season and I'm having fun so far. I think I'm six and two, five and two or six and two in my placement matches so far. Uh, so it's been going well and I've been playing well and I'm playing like a bunch of different champs. So that's been nice. Um, but it always wanes as the season goes on. There's a lot of nights where I'll get on, I'll play one game. If the game doesn't go well, I'm just like, like that was pretty good. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to play something I, else I now. I'm good now. So it's, it's rare. Unless I'm, like, streaming or playing with friends, it's rare to see me play more than two to three games at most of Mm -hmm. League in a day. Fair enough, fair enough. So, me playing eight across two nights, that's a lot of League. That's a good weekend of League for me. (laughs) Yeah, I kept kept seeing you be like, I'm playing League tonight. I was like, oh, cool. And then, like, I'd be on, like, an hour or a couple hours later, whatever it is, and I'd, like... I'd just be on TFT, I hover over. I'd be like, oh, JC's playing. Maybe I'll do a queue with him. We're like, never mind, he's playing Valorant. Nope. <laughs> I'm like, never mind, he's already playing Valorant. Nope. That, that guy gave up fucking you one game hey, in. <laughs> I got a two and a half hour stream in uh, uh, on, I think it was on Friday. I went three and one in my games. I felt like it was pretty good. GG. But I am playing Valorant too. I'm excited about the new patch, the new battle pass. There's some sick stuff in the new battle pass that I'm super hyped about. Yeah, we saw that. That's why we so, were thinking about getting back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like... Uh, those are definitely going to be kind of my two main pushes right now and getting in some uh, some Halo when I can get a full four stack. You still got to finish Metroid. I do. I know. It's it's You're been lagging. collecting dust. I haven't been touching my Switch a ton. Pokemon 2, right? Did you finish that? Uh, no, I still haven't. I The Pokemon League just Weak, took my man. legs out Weak, from under man. me. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Everybody knows Earthquake, man. Girl, it's not gotta, cool. You just got to close those out, man. You can't just be lingering and without beating the Elite Four. That's some Kyle stuff. <laughs> little filth slander. Little filth it's slander. It's not a neat speak of beat episode. Yeah, bro. There's a little filth slander. He just edits there. it out completely so it makes yeah. it sound like, oh, I He's love He's just going to bleed Kyle. out this I love entire Kyle. Kyle. He just yeah. says it over and <laughs> over again. He's like, when you, when you talk smack on your editor before the episode yep. goes live. Love you, Kyle. Uh, that's going to do it, though, for this episode, number 17 in the books. Luke, always a pleasure to get to come and uh, hang out with you and talk. Remember, folks, if you want to listen to our episodes, we are on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Or if you want to see our gorgeous faces and enjoy the uh, video version of the episode, we're over on YouTube. Just search Esports Arena. That's mm. going to do it. We have more uh, Esports Arena stuff going on all week. Make sure to tune in at twitch.tv forward slash Esports Arena. we got Series E going on all week. It's going to be a blast. And we'll be back with another episode next time around. Everybody have a great uh, rest of your week. We'll see you again next time. See ya. Thank mm-hmm. you.